Hi, and welcome to the Haverhill Journal, where we give you a quick look at what's happening now in our city. I'm Lindsay Paris, and if your yard is in need of some cooling shade, especially at this time of year, watch to find out how you can possibly get free trees planted for you. Plus, we'll visit the Saggy Hue Lodge to see how their generosity is benefiting local college-bound students and hear about the upcoming farmer's market opening. But first, the flags lined up along Monument Street fluttered in the cooling breeze on Wednesday, heralding the arrival of the Vietnam Veterans Memorial Fund Wall That Heals, a half-scale replica of the Vietnam Veterans Memorial in Washington, D.C. The Wall That Heals contains all 58,300 names memorialized on the original, providing a way for our community to reflect on and honor those that served and sacrificed. We're the same organization, Vietnam Veterans Memorial Fund, out of Washington, that founded the Vietnam Veterans Memorial in Washington. A lot of people can't make it to the wall in Washington, so uh, they designed a traveling version. Uh, this is the second go around now, but it's been on the road for 20 years. We get 90 to 100 requests every year, and we can do maybe 42 at the most. So this year we have 42 stops. The local veterans organization here uh, requested us last year to come here. So how has your experience been this morning here in Haverhill, seeing this great reception, all these people here? This is an amazing town to be in. We, we were at the Wayside Rest getting ready for the escort and 100 motorcycles showed up. Now is this your first time being involved with the Wall That Heals? Oh no, no, I've done, I've done a number of wall escorts before. I've done guard duty for the walls before. I will pull 24 hour shifts on guard uh, to protect the wall. This is, this is an incredible, uh, incredible day for us. It's very emotional, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's, it's, it's difficult, but this is what we're all about. The names on this wall, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of these names were never accounted for and we're, we're working toward that. This is tremendous. Uh, the amount of support that I saw this morning was fantastic from the public and from the veterans groups and, and this is what we're striving for. Rolling Thunder is a national POW MIA organization. Rolling Thunder was established in the late 80s uh, to bring awareness to the POW MIA issue that at the time was still a prevalent issue. It was still believed that there were Vietnam veterans that had not returned home from Vietnam and there were reported sightings of Vietnam veterans, MIAs that were still in captivity in Vietnam at the time. We don't believe there's any POWs anymore, but there's still plenty of MIAs. Uh, last count, I believe the numbers are in the 80,000s. Um, of, of missing American soldiers who are still buried on foreign soil um, and we want to keep continuous pressure on the U.S. government as well as any other organization that's willing to do what they can to retrieve those, those MIAs. It means the world to me to be on it, to escort this. Like I said, I'm not a veteran, this is my way of giving back. I know several Vietnam veterans who I'm very friendly with along the years. About riding in the Cortez, tell us about that, just what was the experience like? Oh, it, it's, it's thrilling knowing that they shut down a highway to honor the names on the wall, the 58,000 plus. I've done this escort in mass probably a half a dozen times, and every time I do it, I just get, I get the chills, and it's honorable doing this to these vets that sacrificed their lives. The wall called me up a couple weeks ago and asked me if I'd bring the tiny home down because my wife and I uh, bought 11 acres of land in Lee, New Hampshire, and we started a nonprofit, 501c3 and we donated the land to the nonprofit free and clear with a stipulation in the deed the property can be, never be used from now to eternity except for helping homeless combat veterans. And on the property we built a uh, church for the veterans and now we're building 12 of these tiny homes for our homeless combat veterans to live rent free with all utilities paid until they get back on their feet or they die. When I came back from Vietnam my first three years back, I was homeless on the streets of Dover and Portsmouth, New Hampshire. And one night, another Vietnam veteran that got back a year before me, he took me in his apartment, so I started getting medical care, went to UNH, met my wife at UNH, and we've been married over 35 years now. They're bringing the wall to the people because a lot of people will never have the chance to go to D.C. to see the wall. And the Vietnam Memorial Wall is a very special place to me because I was over there and I know some of the names on the wall. 
When we do it in a local community like this, it gives us an opportunity for a veteran that it's a little more comfortable here. They've been here before, they have friends around, and it's a stepping stone for a lot of people too. We have a lot of our membership that are, are still touched by this wall. Uh, when we were in D.C. a few weeks back, one of our members broke down because he lost a good friend of his, and to this day, he still struggles to, to see his name on the wall. It's, it's a very, very touching issue for him. So bringing the wall to places like Haverhill and other locations around New England allows people to make that connection without having to travel to D.C. It's on the grounds of Haverhill High School, out on the track and field area. It's always free, and uh, we're, we're open 24 hours a day. If you don't want to come down when there's people around during the day, you can come down at midnight. It's all lit up, and you can have it all to yourself. It's, it's amazing. There's, there's volunteers here 24 hours a day. I really encourage people to come down and visit and tell people that, that maybe haven't seen the advertisements that it's here, because we'll be here 24 hours a day until Sunday afternoon. The wall that heals will remain on display at Haverhill High School 24 hours a day through Sunday, June 18th, and is presented by the Haverhill Veterans Council. What would you say to having a tree or three planted in your yard by a professional crew for free? If you say, sign me up, then check out the new Greening the Gateway Cities program. Designed to help you save on your home heating and cooling expenses, the program will fund the planting of over 3,000 trees in certain Haverhill neighborhoods through 2019, and it's open to both homeowners and renters. With over 40 species available, you're sure to find the tree that is right for your yard. We tagged along with the crew on a recent planting day. We're here today in Haverhill, the Mount Washington neighborhood, and today we're here putting a few trees in the ground um, as part of our energy efficiency program for the trees to grow up and shade uh, the buildings in the community. There are certain programs, you know, there are rebates, um, there are incentives for people who maybe already own a home, but we notice a lack of participation in sort of the inner city, you know, kind of core, more densely populated parts of the state. We realized we could get some of that efficiency uh, without putting the burden on the renter by getting it from outside the homes. So planting trees around the home, they'll grow up, um, infill the canopy, shade the homes. So we all know about that, the direct shading component where you'll save on your air conditioning costs. But if you get enough trees over a certain acreage, the air infiltration is really what causes your heating bill to go up. So it can save you on your heating costs in the winter as well. Here it's the Mount Washington uh, neighborhood that we're planting. Unfortunately, we don't have enough funds to plant the entire city. We would love to someday. Um, so we focus on a concentrated planting zone, about 500 to 750 acres or so, and that gives us that density of canopy that we're looking to get. Hello, my name is Nate with the DCR. I'm the uh, forester here in Haverhill uh, that's uh, running this crew here today. And what we're doing is uh, planting trees for this homeowner. We're putting in a windbreak for him to uh, help reduce the amount of wind through the area. Also, he has uh, very wet soil here, so we're planting trees to help soak it up so that uh, he has a drier lawn later on in life. So what we have here is uh, a red maple, uh, is what we chose to uh, plant on this property. It's a native tree to the area. Up ahead, we have two other trees that are black gums. Over here, we have a tulip tree. It has nice tulip flowers to it in the springtime, orangish yellow. When we go on a job site, we'll discuss all this with a homeowner. The idea is to diversify and plant as many different trees as you can in the urban environment, especially ones that can tolerate the stresses of pollution, compacted soils, drought, um, and those are the trees that we're looking to plant here. So people have a large palette to choose from, whatever they're looking for, we can work with them to get the right tree for the right place. So uh, right now, what Mark is doing is uh, prepping our next tree to go in the ground. They'll uh, start half the hole now. We don't like digging the whole hole yet because we want to know how deep to put the tree because we don't want to plant your trees too deep. It's probably going to be pretty close. You got it? Yeah, it's pretty good. They're pretty sure they have the uh, tree and the hole at the right depth. Uh, we're a little deep right now, so they're going to uh, remove the tree from the hole, add some more soil to it so that the uh, tree is right where we want it. So now that they know they have their tree upright, they're going to backfill the hole halfway and then uh, water around uh, the tree for the first time in its new home. Some people wonder why we don't bring machinery on the uh, job site. We think here that DCR that uh, by hand planting the tree, you just get a better product at the end that it'll uh, have a much better uh, chance of survival for the long term. We try to hire local people that might want to try a changing career and the like. 
The uh, International Society of Arboriculture has standards on how we plant the trees and that's why you see us planting the way we do. And this is what the uh, finished product looks like. We mulch the tree for you when we put it in the ground. The other thing you might notice if we plant a tree on your property is not all trees get staked. This tree is uh, fine enough by itself that we don't need to stake this tree, but you might see that we'll stake your tree and that's not a problem. It just means that uh, it needed a little more help and in about six months after we plant your tree, we'd ask that you remove the stakes and uh, that's about it. We'll also do a final prune of it to make sure that uh, there's nothing wrong with the tree that'll last for uh, the next uh, 100 years. We're gonna average about uh, 30, 35 trees a week that we plant. So we plant in the spring and the fall. Um, we try to do a lot of site visits in the off season. So the summer and the winter, that's when uh, we will come by hopefully and uh, visit your property and uh, site trees for you. By uh, 2019, we're looking at about uh, 3,000 trees or so we'd like to place in the ground. And of course, the homeowners that live uh, within the neighborhoods, we uh, want to plant a majority of our trees for the homeowners. So I'd say about 75% will be in yards. We'll find a tree that'll uh, fit your property. Just a reminder, if you live in Mount Washington, The Acre, or downtown Haverhill, call 617-626-1516 to request your free trees. On Monday, June 5th, the Freemasons of Sagahee Lodge in Haverhill formally awarded scholarships to 21 college-bound students who were children or grandchildren of Masons, helping to make their dreams of higher education a reality. The Sagahue Lodge has given out tens of thousands of dollars in scholarships over the past two decades, making them one of the most prolific educational grant-giving organizations in the city, as we learned that evening. I go to school for songwriting at Berkeley College of Music. My Masonic connection is uh, my dad is in roughly all of, all of it. I don't know. <laughs> He's pretty pretty well involved, and also I'm in uh, Team LA. I have been a Rainbow Girl since 2009 when I turned 11, so I've been in it for eight years. You got your scholarship tonight? Yes, You're I did. Excited about? Very excited. What will you be pursuing? Um, I am going to be a sophomore at Westfield State University, and I am going for my bachelor's degree in elementary education with a concentration in math. The Sagular Scholarship Program has been going on for at least 30 years or better. We are fortunate that Sagu Lodge has the funds to do that. They use the interest and dividends of those funds to uh, distribute to the, uh, to the uh, daughters, children, or children and grandchildren of Sagu Lodge members. And every year we'll be getting anywhere from 15 to 20, over 20 candidates for scholarships every year. We'll be very fortunate. I'm uh, the representative for the Abbott Scholarship here, which is given uh, by uh, the Scottish Rite Masons here in the Valley of the Merrimack. Uh, it's one of the oldest scholarships around in the northern Masonic jurisdiction. Since the inception of the scholarship, they've given out almost $15 million. Uh, this temple uh, gives out a lot of money every year to the youth of this city. And it's not just with scholarships, it's if the kid's going to camp, uh, if, the ki if the kids are going to rainbow camp, if the, the Demolay boys are going to their camp, uh, we're very self-conscious of the youth in this temple. A very special night for those students, courtesy of the Saggy Hugh Lodge. The 39th season of the Haverhill Farmer's Market is kicking off Saturday, June 24th, and I can't wait because there is no better place to pick up local goodies. Over 20 vendors will be selling fruits, vegetables, eggs, breads, pastries, wines, soaps, and more. New vendors this year include Battlegrounds Coffee Company, Hobbsy's Barbecue, Rogers Spring Hill, and a new hummus maker. The market will be open from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. every Saturday through October 28th at its location at 40 Bailey Boulevard next to the police station. If you have a story or event you'd like to see featured on the Haverhill Journal, call us at 978-372-8070 or email info at haverhillcommunitytv.org. And don't forget to like us on Facebook or at our HC Media YouTube channel. And that's what's happening in Haverhill the week of June 14th. I'm Lindsay Paris, and we'll see you next time.